While not everybody might be able to afford a USB rubber ducky, there's an alternative, well, terrifying and sketchy, that will still do roughly the same thing. Today, we'll check out the DigiSpark on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The USB rubber ducky is a device that pretends to be a keyboard when you plug it into the computer, which allows it to execute a whole bunch of keystrokes very quickly, potentially doing things like setting up a backdoor on a computer or stealing all the Wi-Fi credentials. Now, while the part of the allure of the USB rubber ducky is that it looks like a regular USB thumb drive and you could potentially maybe drop it into a pen cup or something like that and have somebody plug it in, there is an alternative for a lot cheaper if you're willing to put up with the fact that it looks pretty alarming. The DigiSpark is a USB Arduino compatible breakout board that allows you to just plug this in and start coding it in Arduino pretty much right away. You'll need to add the board, but aside from that, it's really easy to use this to send key presses, and you can use a similar scripting language and even adapt existing uh, USB rubber ducky payloads to DigiSpark payloads with a simple script. Today, we'll show you how to actually set this up, but first you're going to need Arduino and you'll need to make sure that you have a, a board that you can plug into your USB drive, because on my MacBook I need to use an adapter, and in particular you'll need to make sure you have one that actually regulates the voltage properly. Now I say this because I tried out a cheaper one that doesn't do so, and these boards actually do not have very good voltage regulation. So one thing to keep in mind is if, the, you short these, if you short these pins when it's actually plugged into your computer, you can actually damage your computer's USB port. So if you're working with these, especially if you're going to break out the pins like I have, one piece of advice is make sure you're using a USB hub if you have one available, just to protect your device's uh, ports because this is about a dollar, so there's not exactly much accountability here. Once you have a DigiSpark to plug in and a USB hub and Arduino installed on your system, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you have any trouble doing this. Once you have that set up, then we can begin. Today, we're going to get started using Arduino to turn a DigiSpark USB development board into a primitive USB rubber ducky. Now, there are plenty of things that the USB rubber ducky are a lot better at than the DigiSpark, so don't think that this is a complete replacement because, among other things, it looks suspicious as hell. I definitely would not think anybody would intentionally plug this into their computer if they were to find it, and it would be pretty difficult to camouflage. So you're pretty much going the route where you're assuming you're going to run up, stick this in someone's computer, and if they come back too soon, I guess just run away, because uh, this thing is definitely sketchy. All right, so aside from the sketch factor, there are some differences between the way that this and another Arduino works. This is actually emulating a bunch of different hardware things to keep it cheap on the uh, AT, AT Tiny chip. So that means that we're actually emulating a bunch of USB stuff all on the chip rather than having a dedicated little chip to do it uh, itself, which is kind of the typical layout <clears throat> on a lot of different microcontroller boards, like the ESP8266 and some of the other ones I work with frequently. So in spite of that limitation, this thing really does a lot, but it does need to use a bootloader in order to load. So the typical way of um, uploading something after it's been connected for a long time does not work. If you plug in your DigiSpark, it's gonna wait five seconds to see if you wanna upload something and then immediately go into execute mode and not uh, really ever go back and check to see if you wanna upload something. So our first step is going to be to add support to Arduino for the DigiSpark. And we can do that really easily by going to the Digis uh, DigiStump wiki. So the DigiStump wiki contains the link that we need to add to our additional boards manager URL. So in Arduino, we can go here, uh, click on preferences, and then go to additional board manager URL, Click here if you already have a bunch like I do, and add it just like that. Click OK, OK again. And then if you go to Tools, you can go to the Board, oops, Board, Boards Manager, and you should now be able to search, search for the DigiSpark in the Boards Manager search. Once you locate it, you can install that, and that should allow you to communicate to and write with, uh, communicate with and write to the DigiSpark. There we go. So it'll be the DigiStamp AVR boards. Uh, you can go ahead and click Install. Uh, mine has already been installed. And then I'll click Close, and I should be able to go ahead and actually write something to the DigiSpark now. So 
Where are we gonna get our payloads? Well, fortunately, there's already this wonderful GitHub repository, github.com slash said Arctic, and you can click on clone or download. And then uh, what we're gonna do is in a fresh terminal window, we'll type git clone, and then the uh, link right here. So I already have that downloaded, but on your system, it should be a fresh install. So once it's downloaded, you can type CD digispark scripts. And when you type LS, you can see all the various templates that we have available for us to build on. Now we're going to pick one that's lightly modified, a macOS sketch. So let's go ahead and open that in Arduino and see if we can push it to the Digistump, uh, Digispark board. So I'm gonna to go to my recent ones and pick this lightly modified Mac OS Rickroll one, but you can take the standard Windows one and it should work just fine. Now here's where things get a little bit different. We'll first click upload, and then when we have our board ready to go, we will plug it into the uh, USB right here. And after a short wait, it should be able to upload it. and execute it. So let's take a look at that one more time. Here, if I scroll up, we can see the process that it went through was it used the Micronucleus bootloader to upload the sketch, erase the old version, and then within a couple seconds, it executed the code that we had ready for it, which was simply to uh, open a search, type in a YouTube URL, press enter, and let us enjoy this beautiful song. The DigiSpark USB breakout board is a great way to get started learning how to use Arduino for hacking. It's a practical way also to write your own Ducky scripts if you maybe can't afford your first one. But keep in mind, there are some serious trade-offs with making this price cut. One of those is, again, you should make sure to use a USB hub if at all possible, because it will insulate your computer from any electrical problems if this little device were to short out. Also, I will say that this thing looks really alarming, and if you were to have someone come back from a bathroom break and find you plugging into their computer, there's pretty much no way they wouldn't think you were up to no good. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any problems setting this up, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.